Hello everyone. So today I want to talk about MATGAM. So this is a paper published in Machine Learning for Healthcare in 2017. The title of the paper is Generating Multi-Label Discrete Patient Records Using Generative Adversary Networks. It's a joint work by Edward Choi, Cedar Biswa, uh, Brett Marlin, John Duke, Water Stewart, and myself. So this work is uh, kind of an early work uh, in terms of medical data augmentation. So the idea or the motivation of this work is electronic health records become very val valuable, has been collected by many healthcare organizations, but accessing such data is very painful, mainly due to privacy consideration. So the privacy concern often uh, hinders the data science research in healthcare because accessing real data is challenging. Maybe we can propose an alternative, generating synthetic data. So that's the motivation of this paper. So what are the typical approach for handling privacy concerns? One way is de-identification by, by various perturbation method over the real electronic health record data. Uh, for example, differential privacy or K anonymity, various of uh, perturbation methods has been introduced, but still, finally, the data are still correspond to the real data and there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between each record to the real record. So there's always a possibility of attacks. People may still figure out who those patient records belong to, despite the fact of all this de-identification efforts. The alternative is generating realistic but synthetic data. But so far, most of the existing data generators cannot generate realistic enough data for support machine learning tasks. So this paper trying to address this challenge. So what's the objective of MATGAM? So MATGAM is, uh, the goal is to generate EHR data using generated adversary network, or GAN. So we want the, data, the generated data to be high quality. So what, what we mean by that is the synthetic data can be used to train machine learning model and that perform similarly to the models trained on real data set. So that's what we mean by quality. And we also want the data to be privacy preserving. So what we mean by that is it will be impossible to gain knowledge about real patients from the synthetic data set. For example, if some attacker wants to know whether the synthetic data are generated based on a specific patient record. So that's what we want to avoid. And or if you know a particular patient's data is in the data set, but you want to gain, you don't know exactly what records uh, this patient has, but by looking at the synthetic data, you cannot gain extra knowledge about that patient's actual record. So that's this two different aspect, high quality, support machine learning modeling with synthetic data and privacy preserving and without reviewing the underlying original uh, real patient data. So in this talk, I mainly talk, we'll talk about the, the first part, how do we get the high quality synthetic data? And in the paper, we have a lot of evaluation on the privacy preserving aspect, and which will not be covered in this presentation. So this is architecture of MATGAN. Uh, it's a pretty much a very similar to the original GAN architecture, except we added this auto encoder to facilitate uh, this, um, this process in order to generate discrete records. So uh, in this picture, we have a real patient record X. That's uh, just a high dimensional discrete vectors, so binary vectors showing whether the patient has certain uh, disease code or taking uh, certain medications. And then uh, we have this uh, random noise, Z, that's uh, pretty much the input to the generator. So ultimately the generator will use some random uh, initialization, random noise to produce synthetic records. So that's why it's uh, privacy preserving in that, uh, in that sense. And uh, we also have this encoder module to encode this discrete vector into a continuous embedding vector. Then we'll have a decoder network that uh, will convert the embedding back to the, the discrete representation in the original data space. 
And on the, the other side, we have a generator, which is another neural network that's actually showing up over here. It takes the random noise as input, then produce an embedding, just like the embedding over here. Then this embedding uh, can go through the same decoder network to produce a discrete vector like the real world data. Then finally, we have this discriminator as a, a classifier trying to differentiate whether the, the particular record is synthetic or real. So that's the overall architecture. If we look at uh, zoom in to specific module, you can see we uh, for the encoder part, because of discrete data, this binary vector is actually difficult for GAN to handle. We turn that discrete vectors, the binary vector, into a continuous uh, embedding using an autoencoder. And this is the loss function for the autoencoder, is there this cross entropy loss. And the final reconstruction of the original vector is something uh, look like the original vector. But the key is we have this encoder uh, module and decoder module will be used in the, uh, by the generator as well. Then we have this generator. So generator is really a kind of a vanilla uh, GAN module that's a, a deep neural network with a fully connected network with this skip connection. And um, the input is a uh, random uh, noise. And, and here is just specifying the, the kind of a greeting updates for the generator. Then we have the discriminator. So the discriminator takes um, either the real uh, record, uh, X, I, from the real data set, or uh, it could be the output of this uh, decoder by taking the generator's input over a random uh, noise that will give us uh, synthetic records, X, Z, I. And um, so the discriminator is trying to kind of differentiate this too. And this is the gradient update for the discriminator. So next, let's look at uh, some evaluation of the, uh, the approach. So we look at three, I mean, two different evaluation. One is just looking at the marginal distribution of the data set, right, dimension by dimension, whether the probability distribution follows the real distribution from, I mean, the, the, the true distribution from the real data for that dimension. Then we, we, we also did this dimension-wise prediction task, that is, take, I mean, this is, if this is your uh, patient data set, each row is patient, each column is a feature, then we can take one of the feature as target we want to predict, and everything, uh, all the other columns, all the other features will be used as input to the predictive model. And so that's dimension-wise prediction task. So we want to build, uh, using synthetic data to build an accurate uh, classifier as well. And all the experiments are conducted with a real EHR data set. So for dimension-wise uh, probability experiment, there's a two set of experiment. The first one is a set of different GAN variation that we have tried. And the uh, x-axis and y-axis, uh, one is the uh, real distribution and one is the kind of synthetic data distribution. And every circle or every dot here corresponding to a particular column in the data set or particular feature, right? Maybe for example, this could be a heart disease uh, uh, features. And as you can see, right, if the, the data is uh, lie on this 20, I mean, 45 degree line, that means the generated data of, uh, have very high quality. And you can see that the MAD GAN uh, have very good uh, dimension-wise probability scores for all the disease. Right? It's pretty much uh, on this diagonal. Well, if you're using some vanilla GAN um, without this uh, approach we suggested, right, with the autoencoder, for example, it won't perform that that's that nice. And there are some uh, baseline method, right? Some are based on random, just perturbation method, right? This is not a generating synthetic data. This is the perturbation data. You just add a certain amount of noise. You can see that there is some kind of a deviation from the true distribution because of the noise level. And then you, we can do independent uh, dimension sampling. So that kind of a guarantee dimension-wise, the distributions are good. But as we will see next, right, the joint distribution will not be that good. So this is uh, it's actually not a good generating uh, strategy. Then there's a different, uh, other different neural network method uh, and uh, um, VAE and, and so on. So these are actually not uh, as good as MADGAN. They're still pretty good, but not as close as what MADGAN can produce on the dimension-wise uh, probability. Um, next, I think of the true 
evaluation or the most important evaluation is this, this dimension-wise prediction test. So let me explain how, to, how did we do this. So we first select a uh, dimension as a target, then use the remaining dimension as features. Then the goal is to train a logistic, uh, logistic regression classifier to see if the underlying data sets are, um, are good enough to produce a good classifier. So uh, to understand the kind of the, the baseline performance or the Oracle performance when you use the real data set, so we first take the real training data set, train the model, this M1, then uh, apply that model on the real test set. So that give us some baseline performance of if you use the, the real data set, what performance of a classifier you can get. Then we use the real training data set to train a MATGAN, right, this generator. Then we use the generator to produce the same amount of uh, fake data, the synthetic data, then train a classifier on the synthetic data. Then apply this, I mean, this model on the real test set. Then we want to compare the performance of this two model, M1 against M2. And of course, we do this in a dimension-wise uh, manner by right? taking each column as a target and uh, then the remaining columns as features to build this classifier. And here is the performance of this dimension-wise prediction. And uh, you can see that uh, MATGAN actually performed pretty well, right? There's, uh, uh, I think the x-axis is the, uh, uh, the real F1 score, I mean, of the F1 score of the logistic regression trained by the real data, and the y-axis is the F1 score of the model trained by the synthetic data. And if it's around this, uh, this line, this 45 degree line, that means the, I mean, MATGANs perform similarly with the real data. And if it's below this line, it means the real, uh, the model trained on the real data is, is better. Of course, we want to get close to this line, right? As you can see, most of the points are below this line slightly, so the real data is still better. And but uh, when you, but even the synthetic data can get to the similar uh, points. Every dots here correspond to a one classifier on a specific disease condition, and. Uh, these are the set of baseline method, right? These are two different uh, deep learning method, uh, generative models, right? The Boseman uh, machine and variation autoencoder, right? You can see they, they perform uh, much worse than MACGAN. And um, the random noise, like just introducing some kind of perturbation noise on the original data, then share the noisy version of the origin data, that's um, actually introduced a lot of variance on this. It's uh, still along this line of uh, 45 degree, but uh, uh, because of the noise, there's a lot of uh, variance on that. But the, the truth is, and this is still based on the re real data, so uh, privacy-wise, it's not as safe as produce, I mean, using a completely synthetic data like, like every, I mean, all the other methods. This independent sampling, you can see that completely failed. Right? Um, I mean, a lot of those uh, points get very much a zero uh, I mean, prediction, like F1 score for many, many of those points. So that's uh, kind of expected if you just produce synthetic data based on marginal distribution without thinking about the joint distribution, uh, I mean, you won't be able to support a machine learning task like building a classifier for this. So MATGAM performed the best. And um, so the data generated by MATGAM performed great for uh, this classification task. We also did some qualitative evaluation. And what we did is we take 50 uh, fake records generated by MATGAN, then 50 real records by F, I mean, produced in the original data, then mix them, shuffle, mix them, and uh, then show those 100 records to uh, medical doctors, ask him to score this um, in a lacquer scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most realistic and 1 being the most unrealistic. And as you can see that for both real and I mean, uh, data and the record generated by MATGAN, the distribution is very close. So that shows um, even the records, synthetic records are kind of indistinguishable to even to a human experts. So in conclusion, uh, this paper talked about a, a GAN-based method for generating high quality synthetic data. And uh, we have shown you a dimension-wise prediction evaluation and also some qualitative, uh, qualitative evaluation by a human doctor. And in the paper, we also did a lot of uh, a privacy preservation type of uh, uh, evaluation to confirm that attacker cannot um, confirm whether the I mean, uh, whether a patient's uh, a real patient is in the record or not. And also, um, we also tested the attacker cannot gain additional knowledge uh, on some um, unknown attribute, uh, even when they know some patient is in the record. 
And all the details are in this uh, MLHC uh, conference paper. And thank you for, for your time.